All right, tools you're gonna need is a 17 millimeter socket to take the lug nuts off, a 16 millimeter socket to loosen the tensioner if the belt is still on. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter triple square bit to get the tensioner off the block. There's two fasteners, one there and there. And then you're gonna need a Torx 25 to get the fasteners off the wheel well liner. You will also need a pin uh, to pull the tensioner back and hold it back. I guess technically you could just let it slap forward, uh, but it's more convenient to pull it back. What you'll do is you'll rotate it back to its furthest back stop, and then when it hits that stop, the holes will line up. I've got a three millimeter pin in there, but ideally you use a four millimeter pin. You could use a four millimeter drill bit. Uh, this is actually the pin in my hand that came with the new tensioner. I obviously didn't have that when this thing failed, so when I pulled it off, uh, I just used a pin I had laying around the shop, which is three millimeters. Uh, but that's all you'll need, and then obviously the parts. All right, working with the Mark VI Jetta with the CVCA uh, TDI engine. So 2015. Not many of these left because they're the scandal cars, and this is the last year they brought them in. You can spot the engine typically because this is one of the models that has the water-to-air intercooler right here. So the car blew its serpentine belt on the road, and we pulled over, checked the pulleys, and uh, all the pulleys seemed fine, which is interesting because typically you'll have a pulley that the bearing goes bad, seizes, and then blows up the belt. Uh, for this particular model, it was a little bit more suspicious, and we had to investigate further, so what we ended up doing was throwing another belt on. Probably not the best idea because it, it ended up blowing up too, but it led us right down to where we needed to, to go. So we ended up pulling the wheel well liner off, obviously to get there. You have to take the lugs off. There's five with the 17 millimeter. Um, you're going to use a T25 Torx on all of these fasteners that hold the wheel well liner on. Once you get that off, then you'll be able to get to the uh, area that you're looking for. So the tensioner actually sits right here where I'm pointing. We took it off on the bench. I'll show you that in a second. It's held on by two triple square bolts, one there and one there. It is running the AC compressor the, and the alternator, that's it. So one nice thing is, is because this car has electric steering, technically you could run without the serpentine belt for a little bit. Uh, but obviously you don't want to run it for too long because you can kill your battery. Uh, but at least you could, you know, limp it to get it, get it in a more safe area to work on it, that sort of thing. So let's, uh, let's go look at the tensioner. I'll show you what we found. All right, so we pulled the tensioner off. It had uh, two 10 millimeter triple square uh, bolts on there. They look like this here. Just two of those. Uh, definitely started noticing issues immediately when we looked at the tensioner more closely. Uh, so if you look at this tensioner, it's kind of a tapered design here. And we started looking at the the ridge here because there's actually kind of this plastic that was just sticking out. And, and, and when we pulled it off the car, there was actually a chunk just hanging off of it. And you can see even on this uh, top side here there's a chunk right there but if you look uh, there's actually a gap at the top where my thumb is and I flip this over there's actually no gap so what happened is is the tensioner pivot is actually wearing out and the tensioner is actually causing the belt to want to be at a slight angle and the belt actually wants to jump off of the pulleys the problem is is all the pulleys are grooved except for the tensioner so what ended up happening the last time the belt failed uh, with the belt we bought at the store, which is sad, obviously, because it's a new belt. Uh, but it ripped one of the grooves right off. Uh, so it was the, you know, the belt was trying to come off of the system because this, this tensioner is creating that angle that it's trying to walk off of. Uh, but it couldn't without ripping something off with it. So, sadly, this uh, Deco belt that we got, uh, there's the part number if you want to get it. This is a, it's a nice belt, but it got destroyed. Made in America. You can usually get that at Advance Auto or similar stores. Uh, so I ended up just getting some more on the way. Uh, we got Gates, so there's the Gates part number. These are made in Me Mexico, uh, still very nice parts. And then this is a Gates tensioner uh, made in the Czech Republic. So if you notice, I'm going to put these tensioners next to each other here. They're actually quite different design. Uh, the, the kind of fingers here are much thicker on the newer design. Not sure if that really matters, but the more important part is if you look at the 
the pivot design. This new design actually has a solid steel kind of core here that it all pivots from, whereas the old one's just that more basic, it's a really cheap rivet design. Uh, so I definitely, from the looks of it at least, it looks like Volkswagen updated this design to make it more robust. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case because this is a 2015 with 80,000 miles and we already have a tensioner that failed. So not a very common issue you'll see happen. I mean, our uh, our ALH TDIs, you'll, you'll see those things go 150,000 miles plus on a factory tensioner, no problem. Uh, so this is definitely not not very common, but we'll throw this on and then get the car back up and running. So I got the tensioner installed. I want to show there's two ways to actually get the belt back on. Obviously, if, if you have the side of the car off, this is really easy to get on because there's a pin that sits in the front housing groove, uh, that hole there, and then it goes through into the back. And you know you have the housing in the right spot because this dowel, this black dowel where my uh, pointer finger is there, uh, when this tensioner is pushed all or rotated all the way back to this limit, that's how you know that it's in the right spot to put the pin in. So if you're doing this like blindly where you can barely see what you're doing, just rotate the tensioner until it stops on this point and you'll know when you're in the right spot to put the pin in. Um, so you can do it this way where you just slide the belt on and then you would rotate, give, you know, relieve tension on this, this pin, then pull it. Uh, but there's also a way to do it from the top if you have just the right tools. It's not fun, uh, but obviously if you're in a pinch and you're on the side of the road uh, and you need someone to grab tools to help you do it quickly, uh, there is a way to do it, and I'll show you how. All right, so putting the belt on, it's going to go on the outside of everything except for the tensioner. Obviously, you're going you're gonna to have to put it into these pulleys first to slide it over the tensioner, even with that pin in, because it's a really close fit. But that's what it looks like when it's in there. So then you'll just pull this back this direction uh, to the limit there and then pull the pin out and you're good to go all right so this is the view from the top of the engine when you take the engine cover off engine cover just uh, sits on top with these little uh, circle mounts here and you just pull it off by hand there's nothing really holding on just the interference of that with the rubber grommet that it's that it wraps around it uh, so you can see the belt down there and then my new tensioner uh, tensioner bolt is right there where i just pointed uh, that's a 16 millimeter like i said before um, the easiest way to do this from the top is going to be to get something that has uh, pre preferably a 12-point socket because you can get just the right angle out of it or a ratchet. Um, this particular tool that I used is just a T-handle with a 3 8 drive and it has an adjustable head that can slide all the way down to the end. So this was just enough for me to get it. I mean, even then I was still hitting the engine mount by the time I pulled it all the way back there. Uh, but it was just enough for me to get it off. Obviously not, not much leverage, so it was a, a little bit of effort to get that off. Uh, but the reason I had to use something like this from the top is because your usual tensioning tool like this one you can get at a lot of auto parts stores, it's just too long and it was really hard for me with that tool to even get enough travel. I, I couldn't get enough travel to get the belt off. Uh, so obviously a lot of people do it from the side of the car, just pull the wheel off and the wheel well liner, but if you have to absolutely do it from the top, get something that's about this long which is about six inches or a ratchet or or a wrench like a uh, a wrench that's angled that sort of thing uh, might get it uh, it's just going to have to be something that's shorter and and doesn't hit the engine mount if you do go up this direction though you can move these fuel lines they are flexible you can unclip them here to give yourself a little bit more room uh, so it is doable it's just a little bit difficult uh, but that's that's the way you do it from the top. All right, so here's the car running. Things finally look normal. By now it would have jumped the belt off. Love these engines. Back on the road we go. Thanks for watching.